This is a story about David Stern. A local success story took a tragic turn this morning. Len Bias, the Maryland University basketball star on his way to becoming a world champion Boston Celtic, died of an apparent heart attack today at Leland Memorial Hospital in Prince George's County. It's the story of drug use in sports. Michael Ray was a guy who played just like I played. And a man billed as the next Magic Johnson, the next Walt Clyde Frazier. I just think that I have the habits of working hard. I, I always been taught that to reach a goal that in life that you want, you have to work hard to get to it. Heck, the next Michael Jordan. Maybe not, but you get the point. The first NBA superstar banned from the game for life. Whatever happened to Michael Ray? It's a sad tale of banishment and unlimited potential not being met. It's the story of Michael Ray Richardson, a journey many in NBA circles likely would rather you not know of. He played at the University of Montana, where he was the only black player on the team. His coach, college basketball Hall of Famer Judd Heathcote. He'd be selected fourth overall to the New York Knicks and would go on to average 15 points per game. In addition, he also became the third player in NBA history to lead the league in assists and steals. He was being dubbed the next big star in New York, which we know the city covets so much, especially in sports. He'd set Knicks franchise records in assists and steals. Dude was rock solid until he wasn't. Stop telling me about all of this incredible talent because the off-court demons never allowed him to play to his potential in a New York Knickerbocker uniform. Yes, that is Hubie Brown, the man you now know of as an analyst with ESPN. The problem quickly became what he did off the court. During this time, drug use was rampant with players using at an enormously high rate. When his tenure with the Knicks started to sour, he uttered those famous words, the ship be sinking. In 1982, Richardson was traded to the Warriors for Bernard King, future Hall of Famer Bernard King. His partying ways would continue. And a documentary with TNT would report the Warriors would hire private detectives to follow him. You don't show up to practices. You start yelling at the coaches. You get hyper. After just 33 games, he was shipped off once more back to the Northeast with the suitor being the New Jersey Nets, the head coach at the time, Larry Brown. Even with his career thriving on the court, by December 1983, Richardson had been to three drug treatment clinics for his blow addiction. An important part of the story is in 1983 when the NBA knew its players were using at a high rate. Thus, the League and Players Association came together and concluded any player who's convicted of using or selling they're banned. In the 84-85 season, Richardson played the full 82 games and averaged a career high 20.1 points per game. I would see Michael at 7.30 in the morning and he would say, I'm not going to practice. I'm going back to New York to buy more drugs. And I'd jump in the car because of Michael, you can't, you can't. And at some point in time, he would eventually get himself together and say, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, I'll go. The problem was the demons remained. It didn't, for Richardson, help at all that Larry Brown would leave the team. Judd Heathcote, the coach of Montana, also left the team. They both went to different schools. Larry Brown would go to Kansas. Heathcote would go to Michigan State. And it clearly had an effect on Michael Ray Richardson. I got this call from my friend up in Harlem, and, and he said that my Michael is at a crack house up here. His car is parked outside the crack house and it's got the license plates, sugar on it. After getting swept out of the playoffs, Richardson unraveled once more. He would check in to rehab, then a month later, check out, claiming he was cured. Then relapse, check in, check out, then relapse again, and the Nets would release him. As Grantland wrote, after attempting to break into the home of his then estranged wife, he failed yet another drug test. On February 25th, 1986, four months before Len Bias, NBA Commissioner David Stern dropped the hammer. He would suffer his third strike. Richardson was officially banned by the National Basketball Association for a positive test. Michael Ray Richardson is permanently disqualified from playing basketball in the National Basketball Association. Stern would call it one of the worst things he had to do as commissioner. But a point Richardson wants known is this. I mean, well, was I the first per person banned? Yes. But I also was the first person that was reinstated. It was three or four years and then it was over, he said at the time he was using drugs. It was three or four years that cost me my NBA career, but I was able to pick up the pieces, go overseas, and turn my life around. He'd play overseas in Italy, France, and Croatia, to name a few. And he would play professionally until he was 46. 
years old. Richardson would also coach in the CBA, NBL Canada, and PBL for 10 seasons. The former NBA All-Star would become a mentor by hosting basketball clinics for young athletes. Richardson is a grandfather of six grandchildren currently living in Lawton, Oklahoma. Here I am, still able to run full with all of the drug problems I had. Crazy, isn't it? He would ask to NBA media man Peter Vesey. I took the heat, you know what I mean, he'd say. Because at that time, the whole league was involved, but I don't point the finger at anybody because I did it. I got caught, I paid for it, and I move on.